Let's start the last topic for this week. We're going to be talking about Euler's method. The idea is that sometimes, even though we have a lot of tools to solve by hand ODEs, solving them by hand is just either impossible or impractical. So we would like to find a way for computers to solve ODEs automatically. The, the drop off is that while it doesn't take us any effort, the result is not a solution, is an approximation of a solution. But let's try to do something similar to what we did with direction fields. So now we have a function, uh, an ODE with initial conditions, y is zero equal y naught, and the ODE's form is y prime t equals f of t and y. So it is a bit more complicated than what we did when we were looking for direction fields, because for directions fields, we were expecting the right hand side to only depend on y and not on t. So in this case, if you're thinking of the direction field, it would be something that doesn't depend only on y, but also on t. So it changes along the horizontal axis as well. But you can imagine something like I drew here. During the topic of the direction fields, we were using these slopes to draw probable solutions. And we'd like to try something similar here in a more constructed, strict way. So here we have a y0 and we try to fit a solution through the slopes we drew. And this is a by hand approximation. Roughly, we expect solutions to be in this setting. Can we do this more rigorously? Can we do it precisely? Can we construct it in such a way that every time we have to do the same steps? So we start with the idea that if we zoom in around y0 at the start of our solution, well, our solution yt will be curving away, but close enough to y0, it's well approximated to just the tangent line, as we did for the dire uh, direction field. So what if we were to take the tangent line as an approximation? We take a small step and we do exactly that. We approximate y computed at h by the tangent line. That is y0 plus the tangent. Uh, multiply by the step you took. H in this case is called the step size. It's considered to be small enough. And here we replace y computed at h by y1. What is the difference? The difference is that yh is the exact value of the solution, while y1 is our approximation of yh. As we did the process starting at y0 to compute y1, we can do the same process starting at y1 to compute y2. We would like the approximation of y computed at 2h, and we construct it in the same way as we did the approximation of y computed at h. We say that it's y, the, the approximation of y computed at 2h is y computed at h plus the h multiplied by y prime at h. Now, we don't know that exactly, so we replace y h by y1 and the y prime at h by y prime at 1, uh, at um, the derivative with respect to, to t of y1, and that we know because it comes from the ODE. This is f with t equal to h and y complete, uh, equal to y1, where h is again the difference between h and 2h. And we call this y2. So y2 is our approximation of y computed at 2h. As before, we're making the difference between y2 a computed at 2h being the exact value of the solution and y2 being our, our approximate value. We can do this iteratively. So after each step, we construct the next step in the same way. So we have a, a sequence that is yn plus 1 equals to yn, the previous step, plus h, that is the step size, multiplied by the tangent line of the previous step. So f with t equals to nh and y equals to yn. This is called the Euler's method.
It's a very simple numerical method to approximate solutions of ODEs. What are the properties? Well, the most important property when you look at this is that the smaller h is, so the smaller the step size, the more precise the approximation becomes. So if you are approximating y10 with just one step, then you are doing a pretty bad, bad job. But if you take two steps to get there, you're doing a better job. If you take five, three steps, four steps, five steps, every time you're doing a better job at approximating things. That means it converges to the right, right values. Another negative problem is that property is that errors of the Euler's method accumulate. That means that if you're making an error at yn, that yn plus 1 has the error of yn plus something more. So it's a certain sense is the opposite of the convergence. That means that if you are taking yt at y10, for example, and you're, you're using 10 steps to get there, every time you're making an error, if you're taking more steps, you're adding more errors. But it converges because the errors that you're adding are each smaller. How bad is the error? Usually when you're talking about numerical methods, you want to be able to have an idea of how much the error is based on some variables you can't control. So in this case, we have some variables we are not able to control. How how big or how difficult f is, is not something we can control, it's just given to us. What we can control is the step size. So what is the error that we're making? So at step one, so one step away from the initial condition, the error that you're making is a constant times the step size squared. So what is so what is the part we can control and what is the part we cannot control? The constant is not something we can control. The constant comes from how messy and complicated f is. And we have no way of knowing it, nor no way of controlling it. But on the other hand, h squared is the step size. So we have full control to choose it as small as we want or as big as we want. So there is where our control lies. We can control the error that our computer is making while computing the approximation of the solution of an ODE by controlling the step size. But if I need to integrate from 0 to t, and I'm taking a step size of size h, I need t over h steps. So if I indicate by, the, by y hat the approximation that I built at time capital T, then the difference between yt, that is the exact value at time t, and y hat, that is our approximation at that point, well, as we, is a stacking of all the errors that we did at every single step. So we're multiplying the previous approximation, uh, the previous bound of the error that was ch squared, we're multiplying it by the number of times we did the same mistake over and over. Because at every step going towards capital T, we did the ch squared mistake. And we did it t over h times, because we, need, we did it at every single step. So this cancels out to become k, that is a constant that we don't have any control over. If we need the solution at time capital T, that's the solution we need. So it, k has no, we have no control. And then we have h, h at the power 1. This is what is called the order of the method. It's what is the, how does the error relate to the things we can control? What is the power of the things we can control with respect to the error? So in this case, h is the thing we can control. And it bounds our error with a power 1. That's why the Euler's method is called the first order method.